Machu Picchu, unquestionably one of the most recognizable ancient ruins on Earth. It is a place that is found high on countless astute explorers' bucket lists, and for good reason. Placed far away from modern civilization, requiring a 10-hour trek along the Inca Trail to reach. However, when one arrives at the site, they are rewarded with an astonishing array of ancient feats of engineering. There are many anomalous characteristics of this pre-Incan site, which although ignored by academia, we intend to explore here on our channel. One of these peculiar and as yet unexplained features is the Temple of Three Windows. Located west of the main square, this sacred temple, formed with the use of gigantic megalithic blocks, is adorned with three still-existing trapezoidal-shaped windows, aligned with the path of the sun, allowing its rays to pass through them at differing times of the day, brightly illuminating the sacred plaza beyond. It is one of the many inexplicable features of Machu Picchu, and indeed pre-Incan Peru, which laughs in the face of currently attested academic theory and its attempts to explain how such sites were initially built. Most funded archaeologists claim Machu Picchu was constructed as an estate for an Incan emperor known as Pachacuti between 1438 to 1472. However, we disagree with this claim, due to the exquisite nature of the site's construction, the clearly advanced levels of architecture specifically, but not exclusively, pertaining to its complex irrigation, sanitation, and drainage systems, and indeed, the precision displayed with the use of such enormous multi-ton stones. These ancient megaliths were not only somehow carried to the tops of these mountaintop fortresses, but as the temple of the three windows clearly displays, masterfully cut to form the windows accomplishing such a refined finish to their surfaces that to claim they were chiseled out using primitive tools, we find not to be a viable or indeed logical conjecture. It is clear to us that whoever created this remarkable temple had at their disposal not only advanced highly capable transport systems, but stone-cutting tools far out of the reach of the academically claimed constructors. Furthermore, Present upon the stones of the Temple of Three Windows, also visible throughout ancient Peru, are enigmatic marks left by a tool that we, the public, are yet to be informed of. Intriguingly, these marks are not only visible upon the stones within Peru, but are also in abundance at the ancient quarry within Aswan. We have in the past covered the pink granite columns found within the ancient temples of Baalbek, transported from the same quarry to Baalbek, a distance of over 1,000 miles. These columns, we hypothesize, link the temple to the ancient pyramids, and these enigmatic stone-cut marks, present at Machu Picchu, we assert, connect all three. We believe that as more detailed alternative research is undertaken upon these sites, the connections between them, or more specifically, the true creators of said sites, will become apparent as the same. Both religious and evolution theories, in their current forms, stifle this truth by their very nature. Yet, thankfully, as more and more curious individuals relinquish themselves of the rigid and conformist chains of ideologies in favor of a pursuit of the truths of our Earth, the reality of history will inevitably be unraveled. Who built the Temple of Three Windows? How did they construct such an astonishing site, built with such aligned precision, with such enormous stones? It is undoubtedly highly compelling. There are many areas of modern historical study, and the conclusions thereof, which not only are incorrect, but carefully planned, highly funded, and precisely executed convolutions of our true history theft of our true origins, and what lost civilizations were once capable of creating, systematically obliterating our heritage all around us, something the channel witnesses on a daily basis. There are many possible reasons for the motivation for such callous actions, 
yet all are ultimately found to have nefarious intentions, greed, power, control, and paradigm. With funded academics complicit in this destruction, there is now very little MH has not covered, investigated, or encountered regarding antiquarian subject matter. As such, is now utterly convinced the timeline for the history of humans is far larger, far greater, and far more spectacular than any religious, geological, archaeological, historical, or any other academically funded field or institute, who greatly profit from the propping up such continued misconceptions will ever willingly admit. It is up to all of us to remain thorns in the sides of institutional liars. The truth is out there, but one must be relentless in their pursuit of it. To those who fund the travesty, who publish the fallacy, is all a big game, a power play to preserve an already well-established deception. Yet as mentioned, these strategic moves are not only isolated to our modern era. In reality, they have always been a consequence of greedy, psychopathic, power-hungry individuals throughout the ages. Incredible, still unexplained sites, re-inhabited by our more recent ancestors, who strategically began to claim them as their work, with modern academics using a similar strategy for their own beneficial motives. The past invaders, motivated by the illusionary sense of power and intimidation, which would have struck fear or respect for their seemingly magical capabilities into the hearts of any surrounding group. This power play strategy, also used by modern academia, using the vast array of said individual's artifacts, excavated at each site to support their posit for structural origin. This always regardless of the complete absence of any claimed culture leaving any diagrams, messages, or anything, not one shred of evidence showing these claimed culprits knew how to construct them, a vast portion of the general public simply go away, presuming those running the studies know all about who built these sites and how. Thus, those unfamiliar with the anomalies we cover can easily make a forgivable oversight as these charlatans openly declare they do indeed know who built them, resulting in a mass of misplaced faith from individuals unaware of the concealed features and the hidden agenda by the institutes who bribe others through the academic funding structure, manipulating those with limited information of such sites, academics put tremendous effort into being perceived as intellectually superior to us all. This is solely for the purpose of financial gain, as if they are perceived as being more knowledgeable, by default they possess a greater influence, as such, can uphold misconceptions and concealment of the controversial and the contradictory. We often stumble upon unexplainable anomalies, sites claimed as the work of civilizations that were simply incapable of such feats. Polygonal masonry, enormous megalithic block walls, and rare but crucial polygonal floors. We have also recognized signature block work, found in many different countries, with many ancient stone builds ingeniously put together, weight-bearing architecture such as the lintel in the treasury of Atreus, that due to its accurate and complex design, is simply preposterous to attempt to claim as the work of a group of ancestors which we know predates our own modern understandings of such techniques. Yet regardless, academic explanations insult our intelligence by still claiming such ridiculous explanations. It seems that due to the fact that academia not only wants to continue to appear accurate and all-knowing in their explanations as to who built said structures, but also due to the clearly funded structure and the orchestrated efforts to conceal our past is also to possibly conceal realizations that could arise within one's ponderings from the exposure of the complete picture of inexplicable, technologically advanced ruins. Not only are many of these sites ignored, but many have experienced tremendous levels of vandalism and destruction. As mentioned, many of the most impressive ancient sites have had many of their most impressive engineering legacies stolen. Lots were adapted and claimed as another's creation. The Roman road, 
Roman columns, blinds, etc. The Great Pyramids, claimed as the work of copper-wielding ancient Egyptians, each of these supposed accomplishments by these supposed constructors are all absent any explanation as to how they constructed such wonders and those techniques found to have been used by these groups, the channel suspects were replicated, for if they were engineered by these groups, how did they consistently make such tremendous leaps in such tiny time frames? It seems highly illogical and convenient that these occurrences of rapid technological development have all been found to have occurred within or near these still unexplained ruins. This clearly seems to have been due to the fact that just as we don't know how they were constructed, neither did our distant ancestors. They would have undoubtedly looked upon such accomplishments with awe and respect, a reaction they eventually craved from their enemies and allies alike. However, although these unexplained ruins claimed by these civilizations are absent any explanation as to their construction, they do still fortunately possess countless features missed by the thieves of our heritage, which not only support all I have claimed for over three years. A motive for this would be an attempt to support the mainstream paradigm of the builders of such. Yet it is nothing more than deceit, with modern movies involving these theaters merely an attempt to warp one's impression of their true purpose and origins. For example, Delphi in Greece, a site we have covered in the past, is one of the only sites we are aware of which still contains a near pristine picture of the building techniques once present at sites which contain ancient amphitheaters. Segesta is still another little-known, rarely shared temple ruin that, due to this continued propaganda regarding Roman responsibility, is merely overlooked or rather dismissed and brushed under the rug, nothing more than another one of their many ancient ruins. However, the channel perceives such sites in a different light. Not only does it contain an amphitheater, one suspiciously robbed out of its staged stonework, but Delphi is clearly of a very similar age, with Delphi still displaying a polygonal stage floor. Yet at Segesta, a group of individuals, perhaps from a certain institute which shall not be named, who have for over a century been repeatedly reported as actively seeking out, buying, stealing, and eventually concealing many controversial artifacts. Yet the deliberate destruction of features, such as the stone at these sites, is beyond the pale. These structures have survived millennia until primitive beliefs poisoned our species to such an extent that they destroy the truth in favor of their fictional storybooks. The temple, although predictably now missing its roof, still contains features that not only fly in the face of academic teaching, but reinforces our conclusions of the sites having a far greater antiquity than the Greeks. And regardless of the attempts to destroy its advanced anomalies, advanced features are also found in the foundation blocks, out of reach of this group of morally deficient vigilantes. Protuberances. These enigmatic notches are a signature we have already identified previously as an enigmatic feature, a signature of a lost civilization, one which we call the polygonal civilization. Additionally, the incredible levels of pitting found upon the columns is clearly demonstrative of many eons of erosion. In a mainly temperate climate, this process of erosion would be considerably slower than that of a more abrasive or damp environment making such erosion scars much slower to form, thus much older than what would witness in a location with far greater variation in seasonal conditions. Indicative of its unimaginable age is but another structure claimed to date from the Greek and Roman eras. Yet when the condition of said temple is compared to other structures known for a fact to have dated from the same supposed era, it clearly exposes not only academia's conspiracy, but that they are indeed remnants left by a now lost, highly advanced civilization. They are, undoubtedly, highly compelling. There are countless astonishing relics still to be unearthed in Peru, rediscovered within the modern age, like that of Machu Picchu, long forgotten, engulfed by nature, 
still hidden within our past, with those which are rediscovered, simply dismissed en masse by cult-like actions of many of our modern institutions, most of which, at a loss to explain the advanced nature of many of these relics, simply labeling said sites as pre-Incan. Peru is home to some of the most exquisite polygonal stonework to be found anywhere on the planet. Additionally, some of this inexplicable stoneworking incorporated some of the most enormous of stones into their construction. Furthermore, the Inca Road, a ruin we have previously covered, long ignored and rarely discussed, it is the largest man-made structure ever found, dwarfing the Great Wall of China, stretching an astounding 25,000 miles, once connecting many of the most inexplicable sites found within the country. It seems Peru was once a very important place, and possibly the capital of a civilization now lost long ago within history. Many of the unexplained ancient ruins we cover also express a near obsession with the movement of the planets amongst the stars. And a huge portion of these ruins were either celestially aimed or had some form of astronomical significance built into their design. And our next subject of interest is of no exception. Known as Chankyo, we feel it is a demonstration of exceptional astronomical knowledge, abilities far out of the reach of its currently academically claimed constructor. Rivaling even that of Stonehenge, it is an ancient monumental complex, located along the Peruvian coastal desert, in a place known as the Casma Sichin Basin, within the Ancash department of Peru. Atop a hill, there are 13 towers regularly spaced, forming a toothed horizon. What is incredible about this undertaking, however, is that throughout the year, if one is positioned in the correct place, one can witness the sunrises between each of these ridges, with solstices also significantly highlighted by their builders. The question is, how did a people place centuries ago within known history, and thus, with a far more limited understanding of astronomical precisions, accomplish the building of such an enormous ruin, aligned with the sun with such accuracy? Just like that of the precision displayed in other ancient ruins, perfectly aligned to cardinal points, the Chankyo is yet another example of an ancient civilization's workmanship, far more advanced and far more capable than that of the culture academia currently claims as the maker of said relic. From the east and west, investigators designated two possible observation points. From these vantages, the 300-meter-long spread of the towers corresponds to the rising and setting positions of the sun over the year. On the winter solstice, the sun would rise behind the leftmost tower of Chankyo and rise behind each of the towers until it reached the rightmost tower six months later on the summer solstice. Inhabitants of Chankyo would have been able to determine the date with an accuracy within a day or two simply by observing the sunrise or sunset from these correct observational points. The 13 towers have been interpreted as an astronomical observatory built in the 4th century BC. However, we believe, with such incredible abilities and knowledge of the processional positions required to have constructed these towers, they are far out of the reach of our own well-studied currently claimed ancient ancestors. Claimed as that of the Chasma Sichin culture, we however disagree with this posit, simply on the grounds of its astonishing nature and the capabilities of its past constructor. It is a place which we find highly compelling. Many people are aware of the archaeological site known as Gobekli Tepe, an astonishing site of clearly great antiquity, a site like many others which dot our earth, which displays a far more sophisticated understanding, construction, and living practices to that of which would be publicly accepted by much of modern academia. Instead, it is often more favored to merely ignore such data as abnormalities, or it seems, if possible, to lock such controversies away from inquisitive minds, deep within archives or underwater. And our next site is no exception. Although Gobekli Tepe has become a synonymous candidate for evidence of a once highly advanced ancient civilization which once flourished here on our planet, it is not the only site to be found within the area or even the most astonishing. Known as Norsen Tepe, this is the real gem of archaeological Turkey. And yet, just like Waffle Rock, 
a site we have previously covered on our channel, located within the US, it lay at the bottom of a man-made dam, submerged deliberately and conveniently very shortly after some highly controversial discoveries were beginning to be made at the site. An enormous mounded fort, designed and shaped with a purpose of providing a sophisticated living quarters, when the site was excavated, it was found that no less than 40 inhabitations were present within the strata. Excavations were conducted between 1968 and 1974 by the German Archaeological Institute. Archaeologists, led by Harold Hopman, the Heidelberg Professor of Prehistory and Early History, found considerable evidence to suggest that many of the later inhabitants of this sophisticated fort were themselves highly advanced, seemingly preserving many mysterious items left by many as yet unknown people. Why a government would make the move to flood such a location remains a subject of debate and one which has led some to accuse the Mexican government of being complicit in the cover-up of a highly advanced, ancient civilization which once lived here on Earth. The fieldwork was finished by 1974. Shortly thereafter, the construction of the Kiban Dam works began, rising the water level and submerging the site away from prying eyes. Who built Norsen Tepe? Why did they build it? It seems this fort has remained impenetrable since the day it was built even successfully keeping out the elements for untold millennia, preserving untold treasures from a bygone era. Treasures which seemingly shone too bright a light for some to bear. What kind of controversial archaeology is Norsen Tepe protecting? What are these government's bodies attempting to hide? These are questions which must be answered. Thanks for watching guys, and until next time, take care. Due to the rigidity of academic opinion regarding the history of man, many sites are stubbornly attributed to civilizations that were simply incapable of their construction. Mausoleums, temples, and other structures found all over the world often carved straight out of the bedrock with such artistic vision and accuracy, they rival even the artistic masterpieces created during the Renaissance. Temples such as the Kalesh, among many others found within India alone, that were somehow carved straight out of rock hillsides with stunning precision. Such astonishing feats of ancient stonework that to claim they were created by the currently academically attested cultures, we feel is absurd. Not only are many of these ancient, unexplainable structures built with the utilization of seemingly impossibly huge megalithic blocks, but they also display masonry techniques and refined stone carving that we believe the only logical explanation for their origins is that of a once highly capable, technologically advanced civilization's workmanship. For example, our recent research surrounding the Basda cave system the confirmed quarry for the nearby ancient ruins of Haran, with a focus on the stone cutting tool marks found within, and indeed, the easily identifiable shape of the blocks built from this undertaking, we perceive as a possible missing link now connecting a vast number of ancient ruins around the world. Due to it being confirmed as the quarry for Haran, and the unique shape of the stones used in the construction of the site, we have been able to link this signature style of block cutting to many other sites around the globe. With the astonishing ancient rock cut structures found at the site known as Myra, now also identified as one of these sites, predictably claimed as tombs by academia. And although there is no substantiated written reference for Myra existing before it was listed as a member of the Lycian League in 168 BC, the stonework still existing at the site, thanks to ours and New Earth's efforts, could be seen as that of the same as many other ancient sites, also possessing these signature blocks found at Hassan, which we strongly feel, due to a large amount of evidence, as having a pre-Diluvian origin. These identifiable features most notably found within the theater of Myra, and although the flooring has been robbed out, which we presume was once polygonal, just like that of the flooring found still existing at the ancient amphitheater of Delphi. Additionally, the precision with which these pertained tombs were cut into the sheer cliff face is to us clear evidence of a civilization's work 
far more capable than that of the academically claimed builders, the Iron Age Lycians, or even the Greeks. We suspect, like the many other incredibly built ancient sites around the world, this site was merely re-inhabited by later civilizations, utilized and indeed claimed as their work. Not only due to an absence of documentation of their existence prior to this habitation, making academia's claim to their creators an easy assertion to make, but also due to the perceived illusionary capabilities that these monuments would have lent to the Greeks and prior to them, the Lycians' architectural skills. There are two necropolis of these rock-cut temple fronts found at Myra, the first being the river necropolis and the second being the ocean necropolis. The best-known tomb in the river necropolis is the lion's tomb, also called the painted tomb. This name given to the tomb by traveler Charles Fellows, who in 1840 found the tomb to have still been colorfully painted in red, yellow, and blue. Lycia is known to history since the records of ancient Egypt and the Hittite Empire in the Late Bronze Age. It was populated by speakers of the Luwian language group. Written records began to be inscribed in stone in the Lycian language after Lycia's involuntary incorporation into the Acumenid Empire during the Iron Age, with ancient sources indicating that an even older name for the region was Alope. How can academics continue to claim that such precisely cut stone structures were the work of such primitive cultures? We believe it to be far more logical to presume that these precision-cut structures were already in existence during these eras, and probably the reason for the area's initial inhabitation. Who built the ancient rock-cut structures of Myra? Were they, as we postulate, created by the same advanced lost civilization we have linked through the stonework to sites the world over? It is undoubtedly an incredible location with particular identifiable features, which we find highly compelling. We have in the past covered countless ancient anomalies found amongst the many ruins of ancient Peru. Hillside fortresses, mountaintop sanctuaries, completely self-sustaining, technologically advanced group whose ruins still contain countless as yet unexplained methods of construction and often incorporating inexplicably large megalithic blocks once quarried, carved, transported, and then somehow, seemingly effortlessly placed atop one another. Masters of architecture, irrigation, stonework, and horticulture, this group, although claimed to have been that of our far less capable recent ancestors, the Incas, built self-sustaining, earthquake-proof settlements high among the clouds. Sites often built at altitudes far higher than 2,000 meters above sea level, with these ancient, once indigenous builders, also one installing simple yet incredibly effective gaps in the pathways to such sites as Machu Picchu, allowing the inhabitants to draw the bridges to the site, cutting it off from any possible invaders. Once these bridges were removed, sites such as Machu Picchu became virtually impenetrable. We have previously covered many incredible Peruvian ruins. The Intihuatan, for example, is yet another relic we recently covered here on the channel. It is yet another example of this now lost civilization's past knowledge and extraordinary now lost capabilities. A solar clock, precisely bored into being, directly out of the bedrock of Earth, which precisely indicates the solstices. We discussed how certain characteristics of many ancient sites, most notably the apparent Mayans masonry, Incan, and Neolithic sites, such as the Stonehenge within the UK, all display a past obsession with solar precisions. Furthermore, the constructors of these sites all displayed an uncanny urge in particular and undoubtedly most prominently at the site of Machu Picchu to undergo a mammoth undertaking, to create what now appears to have merely been a quirk of engineering, entwined within the architectural planning of Machu Picchu itself. It is often perceived as overkill, so much polygonal masonry is present virtually everywhere it could be laid. Perhaps these efforts of stoning up literally every crevasse at the site, regardless of whether it would be on public display or not, may have merely been due to a purely aesthetic obsession 
by a once highly capable, now lost civilization. One who must have perceived such, as yet unexplained tasks, as child's play. The incorporation of natural geological features into the sites is yet another curious characteristic of Machu Picchu, which many individuals who visit the location are perplexed by. It would appear that the ancient civilization responsible for this incredible site's existence, like a number of the other sites we have covered previously, incorporated the living rock of the mountains into the construction plans of their past sanctuaries. Rather than have simply carved them flat, many ruins display a collaboration of such natural stones into the buildings themselves. The Temple of the Condor is one of these incredible examples. A natural rock formation which was formed millions of years ago, was spared destruction and was incorporated into the building of the site, subsequently becoming a place of worship. Many believe the temple was a pilgrimage of religious worship. The masons who manipulated the Temple of the Condor into the site skillfully shaped the rocks below the main menhir into the shape of outspread wings of a bird largely believed to be that of a depiction of a condor in flight. According to a number of studies of the ruin, upon the floor of the temple is the carving of the condor's head and neck feathers, flowing up into the body, which is the natural formation we still see today. This completes the posited figure of the three-dimensional bird. The temple of the condor is undoubtedly one of the most spectacular examples of what these so-called pre-Incas were once capable of. Like so many other ancient sites found all over the world, share so many characteristics with ancient Peru. The question is why did the builders of all these sites go to such great efforts not to displace or even incorporate seemingly common rocks into the build of the sanctuaries? Who were the builders of Machu Picchu? Were they a world-faring civilization? We find the evidence to suggest such highly compelling.